Hello all, I'm Sai and in today's video, I'm bringing to you my spoiler-free review and spoiler-filled discussion of The Maidens by Alex Mike Ladies, which is an adult psychological thriller book and it was also my book club pick for the month of April. I'm sorry that this review has been delayed so much and I'm posting it only in June, but I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of reading this book and after finishing this one, I also want to read the other two books by the author, which are The Silent Patient as well as The Fury. I've heard mixed reviews for both of those books and I've heard the same for this one too but I ended up enjoying this one so I'll probably pick up the other two books by the author too. Before getting into the review, I just want to tell that this is a book which is very much suitable for beginners so if you are someone who is very new to the habit of reading and you want to read a nice mystery thriller book this is one you can pick up because it will make you turn the pages continuously as it has something going on in each and every chapter and the writing of the author is also pretty easy to follow. Now in this video, for the first 4 to 5 minutes, I'll be giving a spoiler-free review for this book, after which I'll be jumping into spoilers. And when I get into spoilers, I'll just let you know so that if you don't want to be spoiled for the story, you can step out of the review. So without any further ado, let's get into the various sections of the review right away. Let's start with the plot as usual. Now in this book, we follow our main character, Mariana, who's a group therapist, and she's currently grieving the death of her husband who just died around a year back. She's loved him so much that she's in her early 30s in her grieving process right now. And at the same time, she's doing her profession of giving group therapy to people. And among the groups that she therapizes, there's this one person named Henry who's very much problematic to her, not just as a patient but also in a personal way. After one such group therapy session, what happens is, Mariana gets a call from her niece Zoe, who's studying in a university. And Zoe tells her that Zoe's roommate as well as friend Tara has been found brutally murdered and after hearing this, Mariana goes and visits Zoe in her college in order to provide her with any of the assistance or help that is needed by her there. And after reaching there, what Mariana gets to know is that Zoe's friend Tara, who has just been found killed, was actually sleeping with one of the professors there. And she had said Zoe that if this news got out, the professor had threatened to kill her. So after knowing all these things, Zoe as well as Mariana think that the professor, who's Mr. Edward Fasca, that teaches Greek tragedy in the university, is the suspect for this murder. But now None of the evidence that is there right now points to him as the killer right there and the police are also not willing to cooperate with a stranger who just brings up such claims as this one. But despite all that, Mariana has this urge to just safeguard her niece Zoe at the same time put this professor into prison so she just goes on investing the case on her own. And once she starts doing that, there are a lot of things that are revealed about this college, the people who are living there and this sinister group of students called the Maidens who seem to be an exclusive group of students that are under the guidance of Professor Edward Fasca. What all happens here is shown to us as a who done it murder mystery at the same time a psychological thriller put together with hints of Greek mythology tied here and there by the author which makes the entire plot of the series quite enjoyable to me. Now moving on to the characters the main character whom we focus on throughout the book is Mariana who is the main character herself and the thing about Mariana is that she's not that much of a main character material if you ask me because she's kind of stupid and super messy because no one in the first hand goes forward and starts investigating a murder case which the police are already investigating and despite getting a lot of warnings from the police she just goes forward and continues on investigating the case in her own way like she knows everything that she's doing. And most of this can be shown to us and understood like a distraction that she is giving herself from grieving the death of her husband. And after Mariana, we follow this other unnamed character whose story we get as journal entries in between the actual story taking place. And all these journal entries are actually written by the killer who has killed Tara as per the format in which it is arranged for us in between the chapters. It is quite sinister and this killer seems to be saying one thing continuously that he has a very abusive relationship with his parents who have abused him so much as a child and there are like two different versions of him of which one is very normal like the average people all around and the next one which is quite hidden and dark such that it wants to inflict heavy pain on people who are not taking their familial responsibilities well. We get to see Mariana's character as well as this killer's character through the journal entries throughout the story and both of them are fleshed out really well at the same time quite a bit confusing in order to keep us guessing who the killer might be. Now next, talking about the writing. If you ask me, the strongest filler for this book is the writing because the author knows fit to drop in certain elements in order to make us forget that something is lacking in this book because there is something lacking in this book throughout and it is also not like a very 
tightly wound perfect mystery it has a lot of imperfections it has a lot of flaws and is very loosely held together but the author makes certain elements of the story which just make it so much engaging that despite being a thriller it is not that tightly wound but it does not feel like that huge an issue because you are enjoying the story as a whole now the thing about this writing is that it is very 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 easy to read okay even if you are a beginner you can straight away go for and read this book because it is so simple and the way in which he writes the thriller is so much fun okay it's not fun in a way that it is fun but it is so much fun to read because while you see such amount of darkness that is expressed by the author's writing in the story it just engulfs you into it and it just makes you want to keep on flipping the pages and know what's going to happen next and that's the reason why i think this will be perfect for beginners and if you are even a person who does not read that many thrillers like me i'd suggest you to go forward and try this because if you are not that much into thrillers like me something like this which is quite basic and very engrossing will be something which you'll definitely enjoy and there are also a lot of red herrings inside the story okay red herrings are basically distractions that an author provides inside a murder mystery to keep us guessing who the suspect of the murder can be and the author has done it brilliantly here because we have like four or five suspects and until i reached the end of the story i was not able to guess who the killer was at all and that i think is a win for the writing finally in the spoiler free section talking about the pacing of this book it is really well paced okay it is actually fast paced than consistently paced if you ask me because the inclusion of journal entries as well as some snippets of mariana's past that is included for us in between the story makes the story even more bingeable to read okay you'll just want to keep on flipping the pages because there is something that gets revealed in these journal entries or in the past of mariana that we see that could be something that is leading to the finding of the murderer inside the actual story that we are following there are also so many things which the author just drops here and there in order to distract us and it is quite obvious okay and even though it is quite obvious it is not so clear of who the killer is or who the person that we have to find is because she does that in quite a smart way if you ask me as i said before there is also a lot of inclusion of greek mythology stories inside this one and there are certain elements of greek mythology too which he actually intertwines with the actual story that is taking place and that was very interesting and fun for me to read because i am a person who does not have any much knowledge about greek mythology and learning certain new things while reading the story was very engaging for me and that also helped me keep on reading the story without putting a pause on it or just keeping the book aside for a while so it's basically one book which you can finish reading in 24 hours or so because it is so bingeable so in terms of pacing i think it is really well paced that if you are a beginner you'll not be able to put this book down until you finish reading it so that's it for the spoiler free part and i ended up rating this book 4 out of 5 stars Even though it has a lot of flaws it was super entertaining for me to read and gave me everything that I expected out of the story and as I've said multiple times already this is one book that is perfect for beginners so if you want to read it just go forward and give it a try I'm sure you'll be super entertained and now I'm going to jump into spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled for the story I suggest you to step out of the video now or if you have read the book already and want to discuss spoilers with me please stay on because I have quite a few number of things that I want to discuss Now the spoiler section the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the inclusion of Demeter and Persephone's story inside this thriller story okay that was something which I was not expecting at all because it seemed like a very basic psychological thriller when I started reading the story but when we got to the point where we got the back story of the death of Sebastian in that island when he was there along with Mariana and at the same time when we saw Edward Foscas lecture on Greek tragedies being given in the university all those things just bound up really well together and also while the investigations for the murders were going on we also found the poems as well as the postcards with certain images that are depicting persephone as well as demeter in them continuously that was something which was creepy at the same time so much fun to read because i have not seen that kind of elements woven into any thriller story that i have read so far okay i'm not saying that they are not there i'm just saying that i have not seen such stories before so it was quite interesting and fun for me to read Next talking about Mariana I think she was the most stupid of all the characters shown by the author inside this book okay each and every one else that was shown in the story seemed to have at least a little bit of brains and I don't understand how she was a group therapist okay I can see that she just pours out the knowledge that she has on psychology here and there since she is a group therapist here but apart from it her being intellectual is not at all shown at any point because she just behaves like a stupid b word and just goes forward and investigates the murder all by herself and she is also not doing that in the most secret the way okay even when she is investigating fasca thinking that he is the murderer she goes to his house or goes to his room for dinner she eats and drinks a lot of stuff there despite suspecting that he is the killer and to top it all off she has not informed anyone that she is going to visit him in his room and she has just gone there as such all these things just felt 
super stupid to me okay who the f put do all this stuff just because she wants to investigate the murder while thinking that there is also this other thing which kept on nagging my mind that she is grieving okay she is grieving the loss of her husband right now and this is basically one thing that can provide as a distraction from her miserable life right now and uh, she's okay with even you know sacrificing her life in order to distract herself from the grief that she is surrounded by because of his death and she's just okay with doing anything else just not to avoid the situation we also see that the relationship that was abusive that she had with her father has exactly repeated as such in her relationship with her husband too even though she gets to know it only after his death and like after so he's captured and everything all those felt like this main character has a ton of stuff going on okay she's so messed up that she's okay to even like you know give away her life just because she can get a distraction from her miserable life right now and her being a therapist and doing all these things just shows us how grief can deeply affect a person and can totally you know alter the way in which they are living their lives despite having a lot of knowledge about all that is happening so even though it was quite annoying to see her doing such stupid stuff that part of me which was able to understand that she is grieving right now provided a good tug of war between emotions in me while i was reading the story next i want to talk about two characters who are totally unnecessary for the story okay and both of them are henry and fred first we'll talk about fred because at least fred had one job he ended up saving mariana's life and that too he was doing in a very creepy and shady way okay i was not at all okay with the, this guy from the beginning because at times he felt like a cute nerd and at times he just felt like the killer who's pretending to be this you know cute adorable person who's just trying to win everyone's trust that he's not the killer okay it was quite confusing for me in that way and it also felt very intentional from the author's side it did not feel that much organic if you ask me the author obviously just wanted us to confuse ourselves to see whether this is the killer or not and that's the only reason why he ended up putting him in there and each and every instance she he comes and meets mariana's also quite way too much coincidental if you ask me so that was quite unbelievable and now talking about henry okay henry was one character who's not necessary to the story because even if we take him away from the story nothing changes literally nothing changes because he keeps on showing us the way in which he's disturbed by his conversations with mariana and how he thinks that she owes him to cure him from all the suffering that he's experiencing right then at the same time it also feels like the author specifically wrote henry in such a way and again made him appear out of nowhere in the university to when mariana was there and not considering him to be a huge problem by using the journal entries to confuse us with the killer because he has really specific characteristics that are overlapping with the journal and that was quite confusing for me and even with fred there are some words that fred uses that are used exactly in the same context by the writer who has journaled all his thoughts inside the journal so that was also quite confusing which i did not appreciate again next i want to talk about the cult scenes or the cult specific scenes inside the book which felt super easy eerie and creepy okay the time when Zoe just starts explaining of this group of maidens along with Fosca itself. It is very clear that he's abusing those students and just making use of their bodies very very clearly and uh, that was very you know disgusting for me to read more than anything and uh, that particular chunk of the story towards the end where Zoe and Mariana they are taking this small boat kind of thing in order to go into the lake and uh, find that place it was like hell of creepy okay i was reading this on my commute from work to home in the evening and it was quite sunny okay i was reading it at around uh, 4 pm or so and uh, even with that much amount of sunlight and heat it felt super cold and creepy to read that scene because it was super atmospheric and the group of maidens also they felt like just a bunch of bitches if you ask me okay we don't know how tara was but except tara all the other people whom we see as the maidens inside the group it felt like you know these characters are so des- despicable that it is very evidently clear that one of these people is going to be killed next because basically everyone would just disappear that in that university it felt like that to me so yeah the cult elements were creepy and uh, the scenes with the maidens was just you know annoying on another level because i hated each and every one of them That's it for these spoilers and I want to talk about one more thing too which is practically not a spoiler because it doesn't reveal anything about any of these stories. We see there's a crossover between the silent patient as well as the maidens happening towards the end of the book and also at the beginning of the book where we see characters from the silent patient occurring in here. So I think both of these stories are come, uh, connected in some way which makes me want to read the silent patient a lot more and I'm not sure whether the fury is connected with both of these stories in any way or not so I want to know that too. So if you've read the silent patient as well as the fury please do let me know down in the comments whether they are worth reading or not. and if they give me the same kind of vibes that this book gave out and if you did find this review useful and enjoyable don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends and if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग हैव अ ग्रेट रेस्ट ऑफ यूर